taking time to uh, do this interview with, for Sangam Talks and hopefully Sangam Media. You would have seen in the recent clashes, uh, a old Israeli, 95 years old, is donning a helmet and he's worn his bulletproof jacket and he's ready to fight. There are many generals who have come out. Even here, there were videos of this uh, retired uh, general who came out and he said, all I had was a pistol. Yes. And immediately after the attack on October 7th, he was out on the border. You see, there are almost out of the 9 million odd population of Israel, 2 million are Arab Israelis. Yes. So they are the ones, if you have to make a country implode, it has to be from within. And you can carry out a similarity with what is happening in India. If you want it to implode, the enemy is within. It could have a political phase, it could have an economic phase, it could have a religious phase, it could have a caste uh, kind of a fault line within the country are what are being targeted. Thank you, sir, for being here and, uh, you know, taking time to... Uh, do this interview with, for Sangam Talks and hopefully Sangam Media, which is a TV channel that we want to launch. So I want to have this conversation today in, you know, broadly four parts and there is no clear um, segregation between them. But I want to understand the IDF and Israel as a country, the government. Um, I'll come to the context of why, then maybe Hamas and look at their charter. Then, you know, general, the war that's going on and what's happening in the wider ecosystem. Um, and we'll close by, you know, talking about the Israel-India relationship and lessons for India and so on and so forth. If I could start by asking you about the IDF. Are there similarities between IDF and the Indian Army in terms of professionalism? What, what do you, your views on IDF? Okay. Firstly, before I go to the Israeli Defense Forces, uh, I would also say that Israel is a hard state. It came into being uh, in 1948 officially. But uh, the fact remains that this is the promised land uh, which has been there going back about 3,500 centuries. So this was the land where Moses led his followers uh, from the slavery of Egypt and, and, and got and settled down here. And that is why it finds a reference in the Bible, it finds a reference in the various scriptures. But the modern state of Israel came into being only in 1948. And the last 75 years, they've been just fighting for their existence. And because of the being surrounded by the Arab nations who are all baying for their blood, uh, they have converted themselves into a very strong, hard power. Of course, they have the backing of the United States. Uh, they have the backing of most of the European Union and they have a backing in uh, various other uh, parts of the country, uh, of the world. But the fact remains that besides being backed by the Western powers, they have stood on their own because it is a matter of survival. They don't have a choice. And that is why the IDF, which is about 6.5 lakhs uh, strong, uh, serving or the people who are enrolled at any given time is, is about 1.7, 1.8 lakhs and the rest are reservists and a little bit of the paramilitary. But the best part of the IDF is that everyone is a soldier because they are fighting for their mere survival and nothing else. So they may be 6.7 lakhs strong, but every human being is a soldier. You would have seen in the recent clashes uh, a old Israeli, 95 years old, is donning a helmet and he's worn his bulletproof jacket and he's ready to fight. There are many generals who have come out, including if you uh, seen that popular series, series Fauda, you would see that Lior, who was the main hero of the, uh, has gone into battle, active battle. He himself was part of the intelligence. Even here, there were videos of this uh, retired uh, general who came out and he said, all I had was a pistol. Yes. And immediately after the attack on October 7th, he was out on the border. Be besides being a very hard power, it has a very strong, professionally uh, competent and a motivated IDF. There have been problems. This has been a big failure. There is a kind of a failure of imagination, I would say. Uh, besides intelligence and various other things, we'll talk about it as we go on. But the fact is that 
till this time of the uh, say we call it the israeli 911 there was a aura of invincibility for the ida and they would say that mosa even if you think something mosad will find out so that was the kind of aura or or the kind of past experiences which uh, the world had of idf that has uh, not only received a big dent but shattered i would say so that getting back into that aura of invincibility will take a long time for the idf they underestimated i was seeing one interview where they said we were seeing them train and all of that but we never imagined they would do anything audacious we thought they would yeah there is a saying where they said that we saw them train and we thought they are training for a war they will never even contemplate launching uh, not realizing that uh, the this kind of a thing will happen but if you actually see the chatter if you actually see the kind of picture being built the main focus uh, of this operation which they called uh, very uh, mischievously or deviously the tufani alaska uh, kind of a thing so it was known as tufani alaska that they are going to take the revenge all of of the alaska mosque and now al alaska mosque you know is in jerusalem east jerusalem so all they got some weapons caught from jordan which were headed towards west bank towards east jerusalem all the chatter which was happening was uh, being shown as something big is going to happen in jerusalem or in the west bank so the attention of the idf with certain tacit support of the hezbollah had moved northwards second issue which was a major setback uh, for the israelis was that netanyahu uh, not only indirectly supported the hamas because for him the bigger enemy was the plo erstwhile plo or the fatah and then now the palestinian authority so he wanted to bring down the authority of the palestinian authority or the west bank or the yasser arafat and now the mahmoud abbas and in indirectly he was supporting hamas which had gained power in the gaza strip in 2006 so over a period of time uh, they projected as if the things are going to take place in west bank because that is where the settlers had happened that is where about 6 to 7 lakhs of uh, israeli settlers had forcibly gone and occupied uh, the west bank uh, thing then the hezbollah was showing a certain kind of activity in lebanon in syria golan heights that side so and Netanyahu had built almost a billion dollar uh, kind of a fence and a wall in southern part, which was along the I would say 37 kilometers, some say 41 kilometers of the borders, which was with Gaza Strip. So this kind of a smart fence had certain amount of technology, which was there in the above the fence, on the fence, and underground sensors. now they thought that this fence is invincible however it got breached at six major places attempts were made at, i am told 18 to 20 Even places just i believe earth movers earth movers but for that they had to shatter certain things the surveillance cameras had to be shattered the picture had to be painted a, a kind of a radio silence had to happen a, and a terrorist organization like hamas can't do it alone so there had to be an external state support there is clear state support. there is a clear state support That's probably iran However, or uh, it, it is iran it is iran and and uh, uh, of course certain amount of people from jordan from lebanon from syria all that they would have supported but the fact is that the money the training and certain amount of equipment has come from iran okay, so 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 idf myth has been shattered it will take a long time for them to come out how were the resolve what has the good thing which has happened for israel is amongst all that bad things which have happened this is the worst kind of a nightmare for them since the uh, six day war 1967 the casualties are the worst 1400 dead out of which about 300 are soldiers so it is not that the soldiers were nowhere there they were there but they were not prepared for this kind of a thing which will happen from the air from the rocket attacks which uh, swamped the iron dome uh, you see iron dome is is a very very good uh, kind of anti aircraft or anti missile system but the fact is it has its in uh, limitations by way of numbers i think in a minute it can handle 300 rockets and the entire thing got swamped by 4500 rockets or 7000 in total so you see that so it happened from the air 
it happened from the sea it happened on the fence it happened in the kind of a int picture which was built out and of course it was that one week of uh, holiday season religious holidays which were happening so it was timed in that manner so these were all these things which led to uh, this kind of a loss which israel faced idf is being accused of um, lying um, that there was no killing of children there were no i have everybody is focused on whether children were beheaded or no that's the whole debate i actually have a video here and i'd like to play that of a very big youtube influencer called mohammad hijab uh, he was also part of the anti hindu riots in uh, england when uh, you know there was this malign campaign that rss has come to england and all of that he was actually one of the leaders over there let's hear him out I guess or not. I'm going to answer your question honestly and truly. Sure. And I've, I've tweeted about this, right? Okay. I think that what happened on October the 7th was one of the worst atrocities I have ever had to read about or watch on. It happens years. every day in Palestine. No, no. Why do you care about that? It actually doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, no, no. no. The Israeli forces. I've got the stats for that. Israeli forces do not go to the Wait a minute. Go to the government. Israeli forces, led, protected, Israeli forces don't go into Gaza on one day and grab grandmothers and kill babies in their beds and no, no, hey. rape and abuse so women. Is there any evidence of that? There, it's been multiple reports no, and multiple no, no, mainstream no, no, media no. publications. Mm. Well, you can just say you deny everything. No, no, I'm not denying anything. You are. No, I accept that the responsibility for killed. I do accept this. And I, and I already said you that. You don't believe any of the reports of women were raped? No, I didn't say that. I said that it's simple. Do you think they were right? No, I don't know. It's like the uh, Russell Brand thing. You said we don't know any the evidence. So why do you apply a uh, uh, two I'm not. Okay, okay, so it's been reported. When it's Israel, we know they're right. When no, Russell Brand, you don't know if it's your family. It's been reported. He's saying that all accusation of rape of women, taking hostage of children, grandmothers, beheading children is all lies. And he actually goes on in this video to say that there was only one video of a charred baby. And that was... Uh, Uh, AI. So, you see, this is a. Uh, uh, I, I want to draw a parallel here. Uh, just after the Pulwama attack, um, this is probably not not just after, but maybe a couple of months after the Pulwama attack. There were elections round the corner or something like that, if I remember. There was a whole narrative spread across the country that the Indian government has asked the Indian Army to do this, and the Indian Army has done this to its own um, CRPF uh, paramilitary soldiers. and this is a very popular narrative among muslims across india this was a lift conversation i heard of among two muslims over i was going down I, it was took me a little while you know by the time i reached it, we were exiting that's when i tried to challenge these guys but they were of course uh, so i want to come to that whole aspect of the indian army and this narrative later but just in context of idf do you think they would be absolutely lying and spreading misinformation you see one must realize that israel is a state nation state and hamas is a terrorist organization and when i talk of a terrorist organization it's a islamist terrorist organization and israel is surrounded by 18 to 19 such islamist terrorist uh, terrorist organizations they have different names but the fact is there is a islamic jihad council there is hezbollah there is hamas there is fatah there is plo there is palestine authority they are iranian ircg and you name it and they have it now besides that there is isis if you go a little beyond there is taliban if you go into the african continent there is boko haram you see so it is not and if you look at the terrorist organizations the world over you will find that 98 to 99% of terrorist organizations have a islamic flavor to it so this is something which happens now because of the age of the social media because of the information warfare which is taking place it's a battle of narrative pakistan i was 3 years in islamabad whenever something like this happened it was always a false flag operation that the indian army has done it and they've done it so that they can win the elections the federal government has done it so that they can get gain sympathy vote or something like that so this narrative is funded by money coming from the world over especially from the middle east this narrative has a sinister agenda where they don't want hindu rashtra 
which they are saying or Hindutva to flourish within a secular kind of a larger edifice of, of our nation. So the fact is that this kind of a narrative will be there, but the world at large knows and I am sure these speakers who are giving this kind of a narrative, narrative also know at large that what the kind of atrocities Hamas has done on, on the old, on the ladies, women, on the children, on, 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 on the elderly and, and created. And that is the main difference between Israel and Hamas. Israel uses the IDF to protect its civilians. Hamas uses its civilians to protect its terrorists. Let's talk about that. This is clear, right? I mean, they, they keep refuting this. No, they keep refuting it. But the fact is that the rockets are in the schools. Yeah. Rockets are just next to the hospitals. I even heard that the headquarters of Hamas was at the basement of a hospital for it several years. It will be. It will be. Now, today, unfortunately, their main hospital has been yeah. bombed. Now, now Israel is rebuting it that it is one of, because 40% of the rockets, because they are indigenous made. The water pipelines, which were supplied to uh, Gaza Strip from the world over, were being used to make rockets. So, if they were there, they were very crude kind of rockets which were made and 40% failure rate, they would fall within Gaza. If you look at Gaza, it is so densely populated in a strip which is, 41 to 42 kilometers long of north-south and 8 to 10 at its widest from the Mediterranean Sea to east-west, the population is almost 2.4 million. And if that is the kind of a density of the population and you are firing, it is all a urban kind of a uh, built-up area which is there. There is hardly any trees, there is hardly any open spaces and, and uh, there is hardly any agriculture or so, so they were essentially living out of dole which is happening. The problem is that 19,000, what was about 20 years back, uh, 2 to 3,000 of Gaza, Gaza uh, people coming to work in Israel had become in 21 years of Nitin Yahu, uh, 19,000. Now these were the ones who were the informers. Many of them actually did not go back. So there is this old story which uh, someone was quoting on TV also, he said that there was a factory where uh, a person used to get some mud in a wheelbarrow every day and, and, and uh, take it out of the factory. And the security guard would always check the mud for anything which was being taken out, but he would not find anything and he would allow that person to go. And after 2-3 months, he asked him, what are you taking out of the factory because I do not find any construction happening. He says, I am taking out the wheelbarrow. So he was actually taking out the wheelbarrow. So Israelis were looking at what they are carrying inside. Is there a knife or is there a screwdriver? Is there a screw which he can come and use it here? While it was the man who was the main person, who he is the one who was infiltrating. He was the one who was the informing. He was giving intelligence back home. Where is what? What is the routine of the IDF? Where there are loopholes? how to go across, all that kind of information and many of them. Also, you see, there are almost out of the 9 million odd population of Israel, 2 million are Arab Israelis. So, they are the ones, if you have to make a country implode, it has to be from within and you can carry out a similarity with what is happening in India. If you want it to implode, the enemy is within. It could have a political phase, it could have an economic phase, it could have a religious phase. It could have a caste uh, kind of a fault line. But the fact is that enemy or that fault line within the country are what are being targeted. So uh, I do not agree with any of the narrative which the, uh, the so, Arab uh, world is saying. There is a person called Hashem, some, uh, Bash, Bashar, Basham or something. He is one of the uh, ambassadors or whatever, uh, representative in the West Bank of the uh, Palestinian government or whatever that is. And uh, extremely cynical, uh, dark humor. He's using again very good interview with Pierce uh, Morgan, and uh, uh, the same narrative that we are, you know, Ben Shapiro, a big uh, social media uh, influencer, Jewish. He actually, in one interview earlier, had called the Hamas sons of bitches. So he's taken a stand saying that 
how many sons of bitches do you want to kill now because 18 or 1300 Israelis were killed? Please give me the exchange rate. One citizen to how many? 20? 30? How many people do you want to kill? But, you know, they keep peddling the same narrative. And they keep peddling a narrative that Israel is the hate state. And this brings me to the point which you were also touching upon. 97-98% organizations have an Islamic flavor. I find that there's, there's a complete uh, whitewash of the root cause of the problem. It's always becoming, it's being projected as a problem of land, of an occupier who's come and occupied. So the problem is that when do you start the occupation? Do you start the occupation in 40, 48 with Zionism? Do you start the occupation with Arabs taking over what was Jewish land? You know, how far back in history do you go before saying who did this land belong to? So, do you, what is your view on it? Does Israel have a proper claim on this land? You see, with all that infighting and fighting which has taken place here uh, over the last 75 years, I think it was a mistake which the West did by giving this or promising this kind of a land to both the Arabs and the Jews. And then the Brits, Balfour Agreement, they, they, when they found it untenable because they wanted to use the Jews for their first world war industrial kind of a revolution and the money which the Jews could give it to them. And they wanted to use the Arabs to throw out the Turks, the Ottoman Empire. So if that was the backdrop, they used both the Jews and the Arabs and they promised both of them that this is the land, this is yours, we'll give it to you after that. Now, 43, the French got out of Lebanon, gave uh, independence to Lebanon. And, and, and I think around the same time, 45, 46, the Brits also wanted to get out of that place. And after the World War ended and the United Nations came into being, they gave this problem to the UN. And the UN actually, in, in, in consonance with the two-nation theory, said that, okay, 55% of this land goes to Israel and about 45% of this land goes to the Palestinians and why this disparity of 10% because they had more of the fertile land given to the Palestinians and more of the desert part to, to the Israelis. So that was a kind of a equitable kind of a division of this land. This is 67? No, this was 1948, 48, the UN, the first thing. Now, Israel was in agreement and the birth of Israel took place. He said, fine, I'll take my 55% uh, and we'll live happily. But the fact is, since that time till now, there have been five kind of agreements. There has been an Oslo agreement. There was lately an agreement which was backed by the US, which was going to be signed between Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel, which has got scuttled to some, uh, almost scuttled now that uh, this, this thing has happened. But the fact remains that they were, they came close to settling it down. Whether it was between the Zak Rabin and uh, Arafat, whether it was backed by the Israel, uh, by the Egyptians, where of course uh, their president got murdered or, or assassinated, and similarly, Zak Rabin, in spite of getting the peace prize, both Yasser Arafat and they got the peace prize as part of that Oslo agreement accord of 1993 uh, the fact is that this didn't happen and it didn't happen because the arabs didn't let it happen it is the palestinians who didn't let, who it, didn't let it happen so you can't wish it away it is there in black and white but the fact is they that keep claiming otherwise. they keep claiming otherwise but over a period of time now israel as more and more israelis or jews started coming into uh, their promised land they needed more space and that is why what was originally the West Bank is not even one third of what was promised to the Palestine. So there are illegal settlements, I would say. There is a little kind of a move uh, towards the east by were the… They, were they instigated by Israel or was it provocation which led to just like say for example, um, uh, Russia um, occupying Crimea. I don't know if I can draw that parallel, but was it because of instigation or was it out of… You see, Israel when, 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 when two expansionist players… Expansionist Israel or… No, Israel was not expansionist. Never. Israel was protecting its land. Israel was always wanting to have two nations. Okay. Secure, recognized borders 
And that is why you will find that those two million of Arab Israelis who are staying within Israel, they don't have, uh, there are certain restrictions for them, but the fact is they are very happy. There has been no kind of a popular uprising from within Israel because they have seen what is happening in with their other cousins which are in West Bank or in Gaza. So the fact is that if you agree, uh, if, if, if you draw a parallel, then Israel is right in what its stance is. The fact is that no Arab country wants a democratic Palestine. Mm -hmm. Jordan wants a Palestine which is under their control. That is the West Bank part of it. Egypt wants, it, it talked of a United Arab Republic. It looked at a little bit of democracy, but then the Muslim Brotherhood happened and all that thing got scuttled. But it wants to influence Gaza Strip because as a buffer, because they know what happened when Sinai got lost and the Israelis had gone right up to... Basically Israel. fodder. Palestinians are fodder are for fodder. the Arab world. They don't want democracy. There are kings, there are prince, princes, there are autocracy, there is theocracy, but there is no democracy in the Arab world. So it would be very naive to presume that they would want a democratic Israel to survive alongside a democratic Palestine. And that is what uh, the Palestine Authority is actually. It, it had, an, uh, if you take out the militant uh, wing of that, then it is much more, uh, I would say, accepted by the Palestine. It is the true, actually, representative of the Palestinian people. Unfortunate that the Hamas uh, overtook uh, the Palestine Authority in 1987, uh, in, in 1987 the, the Hamas was born and 2006 elections, they won in Gaza and they threw out the PLO. And so, the Palestinians elected them the and then one elected. year later they But they are not the representatives of the Palestinians. So now not the representatives of the Palestinians, they are a terrorist organization. I would not call them a militant organization. They are a terrorist organization because they thrive. Why do people on allow a, them to operate from a hospital and a mosque? And because all? they are having a gun with them. Is that the only reason? One is that they have the second is from the that they come from the same stock. The blood is the same. The stock is the same. And 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 you see, besides uh, getting money uh, and weapons, you see, any anyone would get uh, influenced if he sees. A kind of a Robin Hood image, yeah. which they, some of them uh, Robin, tried for. Robin Hood, or is it um, also Islam? I, I am reminded of this interview of uh, Barkha Dutt. Why do you like the Quran? So that they were this whole narrative about ki this is an occupier occupied problem i i find that that is a utter lie it is actually an islam, <laughs> islam <laughs> issue problem. so let's talk of political islam yeah. now that you're wanting want to, to <laughs> allude towards islam yeah. more and i want to play this video for for you know the audience We are stronger than the Jews. We are here to prove that we are stronger than the Jews. Little girls ready to die for Palestine. We must defeat the Jews in war. Alexa. That their temple is under the Alaska mosque. They are lying. I hate the Jews. <laughs> you see, that kind of an indoctrination what do you do? happens. What do you do? This I mean, happens. so you see, if this happens in Gaza and in West Bank, obviously these kids will become terrorists. It happens in Pakistan too. I, I have seen it with my own eyes. I, I went to the, my bank, uh, Standard Chartered Bank, where my pay used to come. And we got talking to the girl who was handling my case, very smart, uh, educated, I think convent educated. And we got talking and she says, Ke, sir, why the Indian army is persecuting the Muslims? I said, no, we are not. You, you have been wrongly informed. 
she said no no but you are always anti pakistan and this that we are also very strong because we have the nuclear weapon she became very radical and very animated while we were just talking about banking so the fact is that this is the narrative with the children have been peddled this is the one they are growing up with and if if you saw the era of the stone pelters in the late 90s or the early 2000s there were small small babies who were espousing anti india hate you see because they were being taught that they were that was being spoken that was being taught to them and when there was a you know a little bit of push back from the paramilitary and if any child would die so it, get injured then they say are the highlighted you, you right? see so so, so, let, so let's, why do they get the kids in the first place is actually to use them as fodder again what i said the israelis would use the idf to defend their civilians while the hamas or the these terrorist islamic terrorist organization would use the civilians to protect the terrorists you see now again if you draw the same analogy israel would use the rockets or the iron dome to protect its civilians and hamas would use the civilians to protect its rockets and that is why you alluded that they'll be in schools they'll be in hospitals they'll they'll be uh, their command centers would be in bunkers or in tunnels which are below the hospitals or or these kind of shopping malls and that is why you would find that there is a narrative while the idf said before we start the ground offensive we would want 1 million uh, palestinians who are civilians to vacate this area and get towards southern gaza from north gaza and uh, that is why they were wanting no 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 don't go because they are their protection they are the fodder with the terrorists will uh, block use. blockades on roads the best of the leadership the top leadership of hamas with their families are residing abroad and those who are the middle rank leadership also one month before this 7 uh, october happened had vacated gaza and moved to qatar to various other places so why it was done it was done because the cannon fodder is that public who's been radicalized cannon fodder is that civilian who is being used as a human shield and the who why suffers the most the children so while i agree that um, you know a lot of them because the terrorists have a gun so they are you know compliant but isn't there also and they also complicit they are the complicit the populations and they complicit you, as if, well if you saw certain videos when that you saw the video of that israeli woman who was paraded being paraded taken naked and and they were the civilians who were Uh, spitting on them the civilians who were trying to distributing throw, sweets uh, distributing knife attack sweets. in a synagogue they kill a rabbi old rabbi they had distributed sweets distributing sweets they are there 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 is a kind of a joyous thing happening in the iranian parliament so so if this all this is happening you have to understand the psyche of a muslim for him the concept is of no nation it doesn't believe in a nation state it believes in a caliphate now we have caliphate we will rule the world either you are muslim it is my way or the i way if you are not a muslim you are a kafir you have to be either converted or you have to be eliminated there is no third option for you now if that is the kind of thing which you grow up with now this will spawn hundreds of more kind of terrorists because indoctrinated they'll see the videos they'll get radicalized and they will be lone wolf attacks yesterday you saw in amman what was happening where there was a, a kind of a procession which was against the israeli embassy happening and put right police had to be brought in oh, all over uh, bangalore uh, uh, H- hundreds hundreds of muslims lined up in india with israel those, those placards on all the mg road or whatever but then there is a narrative which yogi shu has said if you are with the hamas please vacate up so that the, the, the they understand there is hardly any these kind of a currents which will happen in up you have to have a strong federation you have to within the democracy there is if you are honest if you are doing it for the larger good if you are strong things will not happen there is an old saying islam only understands uh, force we must look at the grand design of what the uh, this radical islam or uh, i would say political islam wants first they will use these terrorists to create this kind of a incident large scale incident so they will and they will broadcast it so when they broadcast it it will 
show panic it will show mayhem it will show destruction so they have created a narrative that we are all powerful and if it is you are not with us then we will destroy you when that happens it creates a kind of a refugee kind of a crisis people want to get away from that zone north israel has been vacated south israel which was all along that 2 kilometers belt of the gaza strip had to be forcibly vacated otherwise people would have been on the beaches this is the best weather to be on the mediterranean coast there were musical festivals going on there was so much of, of, of music and dance and, and general uh, kind of a uh, feel good factor happening in israel so they create that kind of a narrative and then they show that we are all powerful that initiates a refugee crisis and then also it brings a kind of a reaction mm. when the reaction is when netanyahu says i will eliminate 50000 cadres of the hamas mm. it is very easy to say it it is very very difficult yeah. to execute how do you how do you identify they have all melted uh, yeah, with the people do you also know that we need to just get over the first 7 10 days by then something will happen like the hospital which happened here and the world opinion will slowly start changing, changing that children are dying the wounded are dying pressure on, israel, pressure to on israel to stop cease fire and that is what they good mod so they know that we need to just lie dogo get into our trenches get into our fox holes ease out the first 8 10 days or leave uh, gaza through the tunnels and then after that it will be hunky dory back to the normal but what it has created they would have executed it has created a kind of a backlash which is very strong now when this backlash happens the world opinion changes so the un says i will send in now to rebuild i will send so many more dollars into uh, gaza the 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 uh, western democracies say we are ready to take refugees from gaza we will give them Now we shelter. We'll give them whatever. Egypt says, "I have already have 95 lakhs. Yeah. I can't take any more, so it has to be seal their borders." Ha, we will seal. It nobody. has to be shared. But all other Arab nations, oh no, 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 we nobody, don't want. Nobody, nobody wants them. Germany will be the kind of a flower. White Certain flower. people with white flower. Please come in. Norway will do it. Sweden will do it. And all these kind of a democracies, Canada will do it. True. Sh- shockingly, uh, there are people. I saw a video of uh, this uh, sixth journalist uh, in uh, Times Now. Ah, uh, Pradeep. Pradeep Datta. Datta. Yeah. He was interviewing a line in Tel Aviv, I believe. Well, uh, uh, you know, twenty thirty Israelis, oldish, all standing with placards. We want an exchange of prisoners. And I was wondering why are they carrying them? And soon somebody answered, "We don't want revenge." we want only an exchange of prisoners as if this is going to stop so that was a ploy 199 prisoners because there is a history to it for one soldier ilad they had exchanged thousands of palestinians were left uh, they were left so they thought 199 prisoners so they can dictate whatever has happened but now they are there is a resolve they say they can we if you stop shelling or air air, air attacks we'll start returning the prisoners no no first return then we will see so there is no kind of a, but but when getting back to what the narrative which terrorists do now when there is this uh, kind of a world opinion happening and people are ready to take in refugees happened from syria happened from morocco happened from algeria happened from somalia so they all go and swamp rohingyas in if you take it, take it in the indian context you see kashmiri pandits from there they all they settle down so pandits are different they are not uh, so these now these pockets of so called minorities which have come into your country to play the victim card start demanding special rights slowly slowly then they start proliferating they change the democratic status of that Area. The entire demography be, be it changes. Okla, be, be it Chain Bag, be it certain other pockets of Delhi. But the local politician will, for the oh. vote politics of again, will give him a Aadhaar card, will give him something, freebies and all that. And then they have uh, start demanding the right. And as they get stronger, they there are violent protests, and they want to change the narrative. Then they want to change the regime. So that is happening to world over. the attempts is are being made and when they change the regime it is part of that larger yeah, caliphate yeah. or khurasan yeah. so that from from yeah. the middle east to indonesia we will have one kind of a caliphate so this yeah. is a narrative with the every islamist 
एवरी वन हु इज अटेन फॉलोअर ऑफ पोलिटिकल इस्लाम वुड वॉन्ट टू अटेम्प्ट बट दे विल यूज द मिलिटेंट पार्ट ऑफ दैट पोलिटिकल इस्लाम ग्रोप दैट इज द टेररिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू इनिशिएट दिस काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग सो दिस इज द एंटायर साइकिल एंड इट कीप्स रिपीटिंग इन डिफरेंट रीजन्स एट डिफरेंट टाइम्स विद डिफरेंट इंटेंसिटी एंड दैट इज वाई यू फाइंड दैट दे विल बी मुस्लिम दे मे बी शिया और सुन्नी येलो इज अलेस्टीनियन सुन्नी बट अ शिया ईरान is siding supporting with them so that kind of a narrative happens because in the larger when they look at the larger picture it is islam their division will come in later and that is where we uh, it would be a maybe politically incorrect statement to say that if jews are persecuted the world over and they have no other place to go same is the thing with with, with hindus they they would have no other place to go if something like this happens so i wanted to use this uh, hook to go to hamas's hamas's charter so it says israel will exist and will continue to exist until islam will obliterate it just as it obliterated others before it its definition of the movement article 1 the islamic resistance movement which is actually hamas uh, the program our program is islam from it draws its ideas ways of thinking and understanding of the universe life life and man it resorts to it for judgment and all its conduct and is inspired by it for the guidance of its steps um it then goes on to claim that we are part of muslim brotherhood which is a <laughs> pan islamism uh, right there that we are absolutely clear that jews are our enemy and uh, quran actually openly says that uh, jews and the kafir and the uh, what does it say the jews and generally also for kafirs that they are the worst of all creation this is so, true hamas is the only organize i would say terrorist organization in in the neighborhood vicinity of uh, of israel which does not propagate a two nation theory they want to annihilate israel the jew jews so in a way they are against the palestinian civilians or the people arab who are there the fact is hamas is not only bad for israel hamas is bad for palestinians and hamas is bad for the world why don't palestinians rise up against them so i'll give you why i'm asking this when uh, putin invaded uh, ukraine you know these a lot of western liberals progressives as they call themselves self anoint themselves as progressives and whatever they said oh there must be an uprising from within russia against this uh, war monger and whatever right so the expectation that people must rise they they did exactly the same thing when modi came to power they said people must rise against modi and all of that as if the people are not with you know their their leaders so the point i'm making is why is the same expectation not from the palestinians you see the palestinians uh, i will not only i'll generalize not say not only the palestinians the muslims at large the moderate muslims the ones who are educated muslims they would prefer to keep quiet rather than make a stance because then they are worried about a fatwa against them or their family or their interests so they would rem- rather remain quiet it is only lately that you on a tv debate you will find a vibrant kind of a muslim lady trying to take on the molvis or the mullahs or the the one they, they but they are very few muslim sir they are, they are, they will actually yeah very few very but few. they almost are on the edge of they actually end up being more hindu than more muslim but the fact is ke at least you see something Haan, five years back them. in in india there was no way no, that anyone would could so that the palestinians you see what kashmiris do they are largely fanciers they will side with the force or the power with they seem uh, with they perceive to be more powerful on that given day is that because of islamic also soft corner for islam that will always be there you see that will always be there that that is the actually that is the baseline you see religion before a nation religion before anything else so if religion so islam that is a given but a kashmiri will also side with someone who is the power of the day if i post article 370 it is the center which is more powerful or it is the governor 
who's more powerful or the security forces that were upper hand, they will be all, all that kind of thing. But also, you see, it is not only just that they will side. It is also that whatever support they were getting, whether it was ideological from Pakistan, whether it was from the Huriyat, which was coming from the top leadership, and whether it was funding or the finances which were coming in, whether it was fake uh, FICN, which was flowing in from uh, Pakistan, and the fake 500 rupee note being given to a stone pelter to throw stone and then merge with the say. So all that has stopped. And that is why the federal structure, that is why, why I say Israel is small. It has a 9 million population. We are 140, 150 crore, out of which we have 25 to 30 percent now Muslims. And there will be illegal immigrants and Rohingyas and so many other things. So it is a much more humongous issue for us than it is for Israel. But for that also, we have to have a strong federal structure. And in that federal structure, the center has to be very powerful. And that is my kind of a worry that this Indi alliance or whatever they say, these courts who are now yesterday with, with the Palestinian Authority, we all are with Palestinian Authority in the sense, uh, Palestinians, if it is a civilian casualty, if it is a children. But it, is, it doesn't mean that we are siding the Hamas. Willy-nilly we were siding with the Hamas. That is what uh, most of our uh, uh, Malvis or these... Uh, their, their, their position is that you side with the Palestine, Palestinian citizens. How are they involved? They are not Hamas. Okay, what should Israel do? And Piers Morgan asks both Muhammad Hijab and the other uh, Palestinian guy, what should we do? Basically, they have no answer. They basically want Israel to surrender. Take this and go back to peacenicking. Basically. So, Israel will not surrender. Will not you, you see, the second issue is yeah. that if you see, they say that it has to be proportionate kind of a response. Now, I was seeing a, a kind of an interview somewhere and, and very rightly, the anchor, uh, the, the, the one who was being interviewed, he asked the anchor, it was a BBC kind of a thing. He, she said, he says, what do you mean by proportionate? If they attack 20 of my city villages or kibbutz or cities or uh, townships, and they rape 100 women. So you think the proportion is that I go into uh, uh, Gaza and rape 100 women? Yeah, that is the Council General of Israel Embassy in Bangalore. I in, heard that interview. Yeah, well. so, so, so he, he said that is your yes, aura. You, they have very woolly ideas of uh, let, let a terrorist fire next to their ear and then we will see. What will she? Uh, uh, it is very easy to be in an AC kind of a environment, sitting in a news uh, studio and making these kind of statements. That proportionality, and what Israel has done? They said there will be collateral damage. Do not fire from hospitals; otherwise, we'll be forced to. They turn us the under one. Now they have given them three days. They have yet not started their ground offensive. They are saying, please, wicket, please, wicket, please, wicket. That window has stopped. But still, they have not gone. Maybe they are waiting for Biden to come. That is graciousness of Gracious. Israel, right? Yes, secondly, they yes. released water also now. But it is pass. yes. Release. But the narrative is still no. Oh, your children are dying. Water, you stopped electricity. No internet. What I was being told that the UNICEF vehicles, the UN vehicles, which are inside, they are being used to ferry these terrorists and their weapon system from one place to another. This water which is meant for these hospitals is being utilized for by the, the, the carders, Hamas carders. Now, how, how do you stop that? You can't stop that. If you saw, there was a photograph I saw, it said aid from Japan for the Palestinian people in Gaza. Now that, it, 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 it was a sandbag. That was being used for revetment, for reinforcing a bunker. So this kind of thing. There was yesterday in the news, I saw someone holding a bag of Indian basmati rice. There was no rice inside, there were bullets which were being carried. So this kind of a narrative, so one has to see, one has to, you can't just get uh, influenced by a Malvi who says, yes, well, it's, no civilian should suffer. If, but it is not a just war. Why did 1400 Israelis suffer? So, it is something like that. And who you started? can't sit back. You have to respond. Absolutely. We will come to the last part of uh, what are the lessons for India. Uh, and firstly, before we go there, you firmly believe India must stand with Israel. Definitely. No questions to this. We are with the Palestinian people, but we stand firmly with Israel. We, stand, we should stand firmly with that they have a right to exist 
and exist peacefully and you get into my house and destroy me, then please accept what okay. kind of a, a retribution and that retribution would be such that you will remember. So that is the stance and of course the Palestinians are suffering, so, so any, any war uh, uh, the, the civilians yeah. will suffer, there will be collateral damage. And so lessons for India. Oh, lessons for India. You see, two, three things we need to understand. We are a rising power, but we are a soft power. We were softer earlier. Last 10 years, we have shown some spine. We have shown some resolve. Now, if you are a rising power, which is looking at overtaking USA in 2075 with a 55 trillion economy, if you look at the projection, and you are a 3.75 trillion economy now, so now within the next 30, 40 years, if you are going to rise to be the second highest GDP in the world, then your organizations, your armed forces, your enforcement agencies, your police, your ED, your intelligence agencies have to also be able to protect, be able to reform, modernize, have that kind of technological thing that you are able to protect your interests when you are a 55 trillion economy. So everything has to rise, everything has to reform, everything has to modernize. That will only happen if you are strong inside, if there is a political will. If there is an Operation Ajay which is launched to take out 1000 plus Indians from Tel Aviv or, or Israel, something like that happened early from various countries all over the world. So that resolve will only happen if firstly there is a political will and then you have the ways and means to execute it. So if you have to project power that banner, if you have to tell the world that I will protect my interests like the US does now, you have to become stronger. And if you have to become stronger, then all these which constitute national power, comprehensive national power, CNP which they call it, all these institutions and organizations have to rise. It is not only economy, you got to keep your powder dry, you have to have the intelligence agencies, you have to have the uh, various alliances and, and, and kind of a uh, sharing. In, 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 when Cargill happened, uh, USA refused to share the GPS data with us. We were blind the first few days. So we have to have that kind of a power where he dare not do it again to us. 71 gunpoint diplomacy, again there are two carrier battle groups which are in the Mediterranean. But they are against Jordan, Israel, Iran, uh, not Israel, Syria, Lebanon and Egypt that play ball, don't interfere. But the fact is we are going to replace USA in times to come. So we got to play, we have to punch at that level. We have started punching at our weight, but we have to start punching above our weight. And for that, diplomacy will be a, only a minor tool that the NSA goes, Both the foreign soft minister and goes. Hard power. Both soft and, and more hard. hard. It has to be backed. Only then it will happen. With hard power, it's probably soft power. You see, soft, soft power will, in any case. So the Bollywood, you, you see, see the change in narrative? But sir, I have one more connected point, right? And we've talked about this. The underlying, the bed of Islam, pan-Islamism, caliphate, khilafat, uh, khalifat. Uh, how, this population is rising. It's 20-25%, whatever it is. And we have not had a census now. We will have to be open about talking about the problem within Islam. The kafirhood within Islam, right? If we do not talk about it, then we have a... It's like uh, General Rawat used to say, we have a 2.5 war. I don't know if he never explicitly said it. That 0.5 was, he was meaning more of the left-wing extremism, Naxalites, oh. LWE, rather than uh, Islam per se. But the fact is that we can't wish away this 25, 30 crores or 30 percent of, uh, 25 to 30 percent in certain pocket. We can't wish it away. We can't just also tell them that go into Pakistan. We want Pakistan itself. To, I would want, personally, if you ask me, that a powerful Pakistan is not good for our interest. It will create more problem for you. A, a broken Pakistan. But so is he wanting to break you. So, so the battle is on. 
and he has a proxy larger big brother china which is helping him out to do it so if we are looking at one border we are not looking at a pakistan border separately and a chinese border separately and the we have a large coastline 7500 odd kilometers of our coastline to protect our interest in the iur to protect china as on date is 132% of the us navy and they are progressing at a much much rapid pace you see from conception from conceiving a thing to operationalizing and inventorization of that thing takes only 7 years in 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 china it takes 17 years in usa and it takes 30 years or more in in, in india we just now retired the migs of the 60s mig 21 so the fact is there is lot of catching up to do and there is lot that is why all these initiatives make in india and all that atmanirbhar bharat and all that have, are not mere phrases we got to work seriously towards it but the fact is now coming back to what you are saying there is a problem we can't be shit away the first part of for us for is to realize that there is a problem and only then we'll start working towards and it. the politicians to talk about it and and, and they're talking they don't they're talking uh, you, they but don't. yes there is a yogi there is a sarma in in assam who are talking about it there are others who are talking against this and you know, having to divide the hindus first uh, further by caste based kind of a census and all that kind of a thing but the fact remains that we need to educate the muslims how do you educate we need to modernize the muslims how do we by mainstreaming them giving them more economic opportunities giving them more uh, i would say education which is modern education so that madrasas need to be stopped the funding to the madrasa needs to be stopped making more doctors making more wo, there is a problem because they say if you make more uh, in um, ias and ips officers at some stage or bureaucrats at some stage they are the ones who are going to but that is something which where a balance will have to be created but the larger masses we got to educate the educate the women because they say beti bachao beti padhao and see the impact it is happening we don't say bas do ya teen bacche now because that beti padhao will educate the neighborhood she will say no i don't want a, a second child or a third child or there has to be a gap so educate the child similarly i am sure that the muslim muslim women who are seeing what is happening have a mind of their own even if they are forced by 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 their husbands to go and vote for a particular party they will see what is larger good for them and vote what they see or what their conscience allows so the muslims are an issue at some stage they say that, that there is a point beyond which if they rise uh, in the population then uh, we 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 uh, start catapulting towards a kind of a muslim state uh, certain another civil war civil another civil partition war, uh, ask for part, partition part. it is happening in europe you, you see if france may have banned a pro uh, hamas kind of a thing uh, kind of a procession taking place in france but france germany sweden belgium they are be, 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 no go zones similarly in uk similarly very there may be a brampton where are sikhs but there will be a time when there will be uh, similar kind of ghettos of uh, muslims in us and, and and canada so you can't wish that away because they are procreating or producing at a much faster pace so we have to be cogent of that threat and we have to work towards it but mainstreaming of the muslims is something which has to be done and it has to be holistically looked at while also looking at our neighbor and ensuring that it it, it hastens the kind of a uh, slide which is happening or, or it breaks up we, we if sindh assimilates with india nothing wrong with that if baluchistan becomes part of sistan baluchistan uh, we'll welcome that if 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 the fata or 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 the uh, uh, khyber pakhtunkhwa goes towards the greater afghanistan we more than welcome and then we should be able to sort out that little punjab pakistani punjab so that 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 would be uh, what a land locked pakistan we should be looking at and working towards uh, that's what i would say uh, strong words but that's my views <laughs> and you know my view and i'll probably close with this very controversial or i don't know controversial or practical but the i i just find that uh, uh, the solution to all this uh, to the islam problem will have to be at an india level about ghar wapsi it will have to be about bringing muslims back home otherwise uh, 
or the edge if you're sitting on the fence the ability to switch over because of you know the the islamic or structure organization works in a manner like the tablighi movement it it hard converted all soft muslims who were in muslims in name only and but all hindus by their living tradition in mewat over to hardline muslims what we saw in nu and other places right now with the bajrang dal ram navami uh, is terrible so that's my view and i you know soon i am hoping to talk about it large scale i would say it it, it is a uh, uh, utopian kind of a thing you yeah. think if you i have spoken to many muslims on this uh, not only in uh, uh, the kashmir valley but also punchi muslims uh, rajori that area which which is this side of the peer panjal uh, where they all converted when when uh, most some of them uh, pre partition some of them post partition because of the uh, they found that the minorities get a little more extra dole or status in kashmir so it is better to be that so when we you sit down and talk to them they say sab we side with india we are nationalistic but don't ask us to convert or do a ghar wapsi and he, they they are not the virulent form of islamic uh, kind of a populace they are the moderate or or someone who who has traditionally sided gujjar population or something so i don't think so that is possible what we can do is stop that this love jihad or this conversions and all these which the missionaries which are now why are the the christians maybe now siding with the jews but the christians blame the jews for crucifying their uh, jesus christ you see so in their heart also they feel ke no no yaar these jews are getting too big for their boots so so this religion will always play a very prominent part in this geopolitics the world over but the fact is the clear and present danger is the spread of islam and the radical form of islam the world over and we the christians have 199 countries to go to and settle down the hindus have no other place to go and settle down so if we have to safeguard our interests now we have to draw a balance and we have to ensure that the muslims which are indian muslims uh, modernize at a much faster place and assimilate with the mainstream of the country Dropping rather than all this kafir hood and pan islamism will have to go down in there has minds. to go down and that that can go down because you see a muslim who is a clean shaven muslim uh the, the the if that percentage increases in india if 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 a biduri doesn't start calling danish ali a, a terrorist then then these kind of things may, may so so there has to be a kind of a there will be a rss or there will be a bajrang dal but besides that the larger picture which i think the present under the present government i haven't seen our prime minister uh, giving even one anti muslim kind of a statement he is always sabka saath sabka vikas he is of course always accused oh, he, oh, he he will be accused you see but he is i think he is the only one he and people like yogi and hemanta sharma who are our last hope yeah. if, if if you do not propagate bring them back uh in into power in by 24 29 uh, or the foreseeable future i would say yeah. there is going to be a problem problem for the nation if you all enjoyed the conversation with uh, major general arvind bhatia and uh, yes uh, please spread the video help us uh, get this get better reach from the conversations and his views on on the topic thank you very much